welcome to Fresh Talk. I'm your host, Eric Toll. I'd like to thank all of our Roku members who are watching today, Justin.tv and MondoClub.com viewers. And we have an interesting show for you today. Recently, there was a political uh, Q&A that happened here in Pittsburgh. It was at a local um, restaurant and lounge called 5801. It took place on Wednesday, October 9th, and uh, we had several representatives from Pennsylvania come to sort of, you know, talk to people about what's going on in, you know, our government and what's relating to the LGBT issues. Now, we had a chance to interview them and talk about many different things. One of them is the House Bill 300 that's coming up, which is a non-discrimination act to help the LGBT community. We also had a chance to talk to Brian Sims about, you know, the marriage equality bill that he is putting through the House. And we had, you know, a lot of nice back and forth with it, and I got a chance to interview some people um, and really talk to them about the things that are going on in our government, which, you know, a lot of times we don't get to see firsthand or really talk to them firsthand. So I wanted to make sure that we had that interview um, to, with each representative, just so you can get an idea of what they're doing, what they hope to do, and how they're representing you, and how you can help them represent you better. Now, in my first interview, I rep uh, talked with Erin Mulchaney. She is a Pennsylvania representative, but primarily for the Allegheny County area, which is, you know, focusing on Allegheny County and the Pittsburgh area. Um, and through talking with her, you know, she stated a lot of what she hopes to achieve and do uh, for the LGBT community. And, you know, also, you know, we discussed her coming back later on to continue updating us on things that are coming up. Um, I talked to Brian Sims, who is also one of our Pennsylvania representatives from uh, Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, and he talked a lot about the Bills and Marriage Equality Act that he's putting through and how he, you know, plans to consistently keep these things in the forefront so that we are always on the cutting edge in the government trying to get our rights noticed. Uh, and then as a surprise guest who I was actually at the last minute not aware of, but um, uh, Democratic Caucus Representative uh, Dan Frankel showed up and, you know, kind of came on board and gave us a nice little interview too. And uh, he's actually been fighting for the LGBT movement long before we had any out LGBT members in Congress, or at least openly out uh, LGBT members in Congress. And he has actually been one of our biggest allies and, you know, political leaders, you know, fighting for our cause. So. One of the things I want to do is make sure that, you know, everyone gets to hear, you know, the side of the story. So when you check out these interviews throughout the rest of the show, you're going to be able to see the full interviews on gaylifetelevision.com and also on the fan page, facebook.com slash freshtalkeric, and you'll be able to see the full-length interviews. But today we're going to show you some of the clips that, you know, were from the interviews at 5801. So in a moment here, we're going to go to commercial break, and when we come back, you're going to hear from Erin Mulchaney and her views and things that she's doing for the LGBT community for us. Hi, guys. This is Eric Toll with Fresh Talk on location at 5801 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we are doing a little political piece, and we have our Pennsylvania representative, Erin Mulchaney, with us today, and she's going to discuss a little bit of what's going on with some uh, political actions that we have. So thank you for being with us. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. And she is our 22nd legislative uh, representative in the Allegheny County. So she's very local here in the Allegheny County area and more, more hands-on on what's going on in this area and the Pittsburgh area. Um, so how did you get started in politics? Well, you know, I worked in the nonprofit sector for about 12 years. I started women's health care, and that's where I first kind of realized that government has a very profound impact on people's lives in a personal way. And, you know, I wasn't always happy with the decisions that were being made, and I looked at who was making them, and I didn't, I didn't see any women. And I thought, you know, here's a really important opportunity for us to change the conversation and shift the conversation a little bit. So it was really my time in the nonprofit sector that inspired me to run for public office. Okay, and you did a lot of work with um, Planned Parenthood and women's rights throughout, uh, you know, your time with the nonprofits. Um, how has that really helped you with your views on how you do your political stances? Well, you know, my time at Planned Parenthood, it was the most, some of the most rewarding years of my professional life. And, you know, it taught me a little bit about empathy. You know, you will never walk in someone else's shoes, but it is so, so important that we protect people's rights. Um, you know, reproductive health care is so personal and so um, must be protected. Uh, there's so much going on right now at the state and the federal level um, that's an assault on women's rights. And it's just so important that there are women at the table standing up for women. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And I'm, gl I'm glad that you're doing that because women's rights are a huge deal in this country. All right. So you just saw an amazing interview with Erin Mulchaney, our Allegheny representative. Um, 
it was amazing to talk with her. I mean, we had a little bit of a conversation before the interview, and she was just a genuinely great person. And she really is not one of those politicians that are just telling you, you know, fluff just to, you know, win votes. She actually cares. She was a genuine person. I had such an amazing time talking with her. Um, you know, we did a nice photo op and just had a great time having some drinks and, you know, discussing political views and, you know, why she's out there doing what she did. And then in this next interview, we had the amazing Brian Sims, who is our first Pennsylvania representative that is openly out and fighting for LGBT issues. I mean, he has got you know the House Bill 300 in for us to help prevent non-discrimination. He has got the Marriage Equality Act, and he is pushing for Pennsylvania to be where it should have been a long time ago. And this man, he's just got so much energy and so much power behind him. I mean, he has so many people sponsoring these efforts. He's really moving the entire Pennsylvania and House of Representatives, you know, he's just moving it. He's on the cutting edge right now, and he's not stopping. And his passion when we were talking before and after the interviews, it's just so heartfelt and so nice to know that people are not there, you know, just to be some politician. He's there because he actually has the passion and cares. So you're going to find that out here in this next clip for our interview with Brian Sims. Hello and welcome back to Fresh Talk. I'm your host, Eric Toll. Today we have Pennsylvania Representative Brian Sims with us. Thank you for joining. Happy to be here. Now, you are our first out LGBT representative in Pennsylvania. That is landmark. How, I mean, how is that making you feel? How, how has it been on this journey? Well, uh, uh, let me say something really important about it. I'm the first out legislator in Pennsylvania, but in the history of Pennsylvania's legislature, uh, we have had LGBT members for all time. Um, how does it feel? It feels, I mean, it feels pretty terrific. I knew doing it that there was a moral imperative attached to electing an out gay person. Uh, we were the second largest state in the country that had never elected anybody openly LGBT, and I'd known for years that when we were finally able to get somebody that was that was LGBT in, in chambers on the House floor, that it was going to make a difference. And I and, you know, we're, we're 10 months in, but I think it is. And it's, it's great to have you in there. I mean, just recently on October 3rd, you introduced the Marriage Equality Act. Um, what, what, were you, what was your motivations behind this? And while you were working on this project, like, was there any inspirations? Was there something just, not just because you're in the LGBT community, but something more deep that was kind of motivating you for this? You know, I, I'm a civil rights attorney by trade. I have been an LGBT civil rights attorney for most of my career. Uh, I was the, the president of the board at Equality Pennsylvania. And like most Pennsylvanians, I'm hyper aware of the fact that the state doesn't have any LGBT civil rights and certainly doesn't have marriage equality. I will tell you that I may never introduce a bill that has a greater title than the Pennsylvania Marriage Equality Act, but it was long overdue. And as I said at the press conference last week, most of the LGBT civil rights that we're talking about right now in Pennsylvania aren't innovative anymore. They're not progressive. They're not forward thinking. They're the kinds of things that maybe 10 years ago would have been. Now they're just playing catch up. Now we're, we're playing catch up to the states around us. We're playing catch up to the federal government. Um, but I, I know for certain that we have never been better poised in Pennsylvania for LGBT civil rights than we are right now. I completely agree with you. I'm, through my research, when I was looking up this bill and on your work, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have over 31 co-sponsors in the House right now that are backing this bill. And how does that feel to have your peers, you know, backing you in such a large scale? You know, we, we, weren't, we weren't sure how many co-sponsors we would get on something like this. You, uh, I, I think I was hoping for somewhere between 20 and 25. And as you just said, we're at 31 right now, and it's climbing every day. Uh, it's also bipartisan support. And so, you know, in Pennsylvania, with a Republican governor, a Republican House, a Republican Senate, the, the keys to successful legislation are making sure that, that you reach across the aisle. And we've been able to do that with this bill. And so here we are. We have a bill in the House. We have a bill in the Senate. We've got support from Democrats. We've got support from Republicans. That sounds like a recipe for success to me. It definitely does. And, and I was just speaking with um, Representative Mulchaney earlier, and we talked about the American Family Association. And they recently just put out a request for people to oppose this bill and to actually talk to representatives to oppose it. What is your call to action to the LGBT community and the community in general to, you know, how are they going to best support this bill and help this keep moving? After an interview like that, I mean, what a powerful speaker. Like, he just knows what we need and he's going to go for it. He's very raw. He's very passionate. And that's what we need. We need people that aren't just scripted, that are just trying to, you know, go through the motions. He really has the passion and he wants that for himself as well as everyone else. And that's why he's fighting the way he is and that's why he is out to help 
the LGBT community in Pennsylvania and all over. I mean, the work that he's doing is setting an example for other states and even other countries. I mean, he is on the cutting edge, and it was just such an amazing experience to talk with him and really see where he's coming from. I, I wish a lot of the viewing audience could see some of the conversations we had before and after. You know, that, you know, they're very genuine. They're not so much an interview as just having that great conversation and seeing the real approach. And, uh, and th that man is genuine, and he is really going to make a difference. Pennsylvania, you are blessed to have someone like that right now representing you, and especially in the LGBT community. That man is a hard worker, he's passionate, and he's raw, and he's going to get it done. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, and he is going to get it done. Now, we had a, a surprise guest that I was not completely ready for on this one, but so glad he was there. The Democratic Caucus representative, Dan Frankel, amazing man, great interview, and he had just so many things to say. It was such a fun experience talking with him. Here's the interview with Dan Frankel. And welcome back to Fresh Talk. We're on location at 5801. And right now we have District 23 of Allegheny County member Dan Frankel with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So now you are working on a lot of different projects here, and you are a big, huge supporter of the House bill um, for the non discrimination bill. Right. Uh, it's a bill that I've been working on almost since the day I walked in the door of the Pennsylvania House. Uh, House Bill 300 would amend the Pennsylvania uh, Human Relations Act to include civil rights protections for LGBT people. I mean, we, we provide protections for people on the basis of race, gender, uh, religion, disability, uh, but still, today in Pennsylvania, it's still legal to discriminate people on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. And that's unacceptable. I mean, it's unbelievable in this day and age that you can still fire somebody because they're an LGBT person. You can deny them uh, an apartment. You can deny them uh, access to a uh, system of higher education. Uh, these are things that uh, other states have moved far beyond us, and it's time now that Pennsylvania deal with this. House Bill 300, this time, with, uh, particularly with the help of Brian Sims, who's br brought really uh, uh, a, a face. I mean, the first openly uh, gay person elected to Pennsylvania House has made it really uh, something that uh, many of my colleagues, when they meet him and they see him, and they talk to him, say, you know, how could we discriminate against the LGBT community? So today, for the first time, we have 92 co-sponsors of this legislation in the House. We have 25 uh, members of the Senate, half the state Senate co-sponsoring this legislation. I think on the horizon, near horizon for Pennsylvania, we will stop discriminating against the LGBT community, and it's high time we did that. Oh, I'm absolutely. I'm now that was an amazing interview with a man who was fighting for the LGBT movement well before we had any openly out representatives in there, and he is going to continue fighting it. I mean, we have so many sponsors for these bills now and so much movement, and it was such an honor to interview these people. I mean, it was amazing to be with such amazing representatives. They're representing us, and they're doing such a good job of it, and they're really fighting for us. So it was definitely an honor and a blessing to uh, have these people come in and talk with us and interview with me and take time out of their busy schedules to really let us know what they're doing for us. And it was great. I hope that we can have all those representatives come back on individually and talk more about the movement as they progress. And I really want to thank you for watching today's show. It was definitely a, an amazing honor for me to be able to do this. And I hope going forward we get to do a little bit more with the political movement in the LGBT community. So thanks for watching. Thanks to all of our Roku, Mondo.club, and Justin.tv members, and stay fresh. <laughs>